Ladies and gentlemen, Alpha Core number one by Chuck Dixon and Joe Bennett is here, and I just got done reading it. So let's get through the spoiler free review for Alpha Core number one. And if you guys like what I do here and you like how I break down a lot of the Ripperverse books, uh, do me a favor like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. All of that stuff greatly helps the channel. And especially if you like what I say, share this video with all of the other fans out there and let's have a fantastic fan discussion. So Alpha Core is basically a police procedural, right? As I was reading through this, my initial thoughts were, wow, this reminds me of sitting there watching NCIS with my parents. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing at all. It's definitely a good take, especially when you see Alpha Core. They're essentially a branch of the police force in the Ripaverse world. Um, the other thing that I noticed too, almost immediately, is that when you get guys who've been around the block for a little bit, they're a they're definitely like Chuck Dixon. They're definitely able to write dialogue and pace the scenes a lot better than somebody who's doing a new comic book, say like Eric July, which obviously that's something that as time goes on and Eric keeps writing more, he'll definitely catch up, especially if Chuck Dixon's one of his wingmen for that. So going through this story, there is a lot of action. We do get to learn more about the Alpha Core, which is something that I really enjoyed. It's one of the things that I did complain about that didn't really have me excited for the Alpha Core is that I didn't feel like I got enough of them in Isom 1 or Isom 2 really to, to I, I guess, want to order that on the menu. But to be honest, I'm kind of glad that I did. We start to see that these are three very different individuals, which is nice. And we also got the reintroduction of Michael Copper and Lillian Renashi from Isom number one, which if you guys have seen those reviews or heard me talk about it, those were actually one of my uh, two of my favorite characters that were introduced. I felt that in Isom one, their introductions were handled really, really well. There was a lot of mystery behind them. And I am glad to see Michael Copper and Lillian Renashi back in the fray of things. So going through this whole story, it starts off with what seems to be a rather small uh, crime that's going to kick us off into the events of this story. And we also get to see how the world and how Flores Park and how Texas looks at Excepts a little bit more. It's interesting. I didn't really think about it that way, but it seems that this is something new that this world is dealing with. And I kind of like how they played it in this one, really trying to let these guys know, hey, we're not just superheroes that can do stuff willy nilly. We got to follow the law, right? Because these are cops and they are lawmen, right? So they got to follow the law. They got to be on the right side of the law. Well, the cool part is, is that I think they're setting some things up in this book uh, to really let the personality shine, right? Uh, laws were meant to be broken after all. I don't think they're going to go quite that far, but it is really interesting to finally see uh, Solar. Uh, it's interesting to see Ingrid and Braxwell interact with the law, with their superiors, with other cops around them, and see how they're trying to handle this world. And really trying to find their place in it as super cops. It's, that's really what this story explored, is the idea of what seems to be a new branch of the police force and their super cops. And how do we deal with super cops, right? How, do su how can super cops operate while trying to operate within the legal system and the rules versus how ISOM would operate? And I love that they get into that in this book, and hopefully I'm not giving away too many spoilers here, but I think that is something that was alluded to in the past books, but you kind of can't talk about that without talking about the themes of the book. So overall, I mean, Joe Bennett knocked the artwork out. I mean, it's freaking gorgeous. This, this whole book is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the pacing is really tight. I mean, Dixon obviously has a handle on all of this in a way that is just really, really incredible. Um, and I really, really like that we see the dynamic between Michael Copper and Lillian Renashi develop as well. In addition to that, we get more villains, right? This world is expanding with every single issue of the Ripaverse. The world is getting bigger and bigger. We're starting to see more and more villains. We're starting to see more and more people, not just heroes and excepts, but people in the world 
And it really is interesting the way that they leave it off because uh, I would imagine Alpha Core 2 is going to pick up where this book leaves off. And I'm really interested in it. This absolutely feels like sitting down and watching an episode or two or three episodes of like NCIS and all those shows that my parents used to watch when I was a kid. And that is not necessarily a bad thing, right? The difference is, is that we get some superhero action in here and holy crap, this book is the most action packed that the Ripperverse has offered to date. Out of the three, between Isom 1, between Isom 2, and Alpha Core number one, this book has more action in it than the other two combined. And they're going back and forth between the action, between the dialogue, between the characters, and really trying to show you that more than one thing is happening in this world at one point in time. And I will say, that's my favorite part about this book, is that while you're reading a scene, and then all of a sudden the scenes are going back and forth between each other, you start to realize, oh, the world doesn't stop happening just because we're in this scene. Other things are going on. And that makes it feel a little bit more real. It makes the characters a little bit more related. It makes you think to yourself, wow, all of this stuff is happening just the way that the real world would happen. So, at the end of the day, guys, I always give my reviews for this, and I don't do a rating system. I find rating systems between 1 to 10 to be just not really, I don't know, I'm not a fan of it. But I will give this the way that I always do my ratings. Would I spend my hard-earned dollars on this book again, knowing what I know now, or better yet, will I be buying Alpha Core number 2? because of what was in this book. Buy or don't buy? And the answer, the answer is buy. Absolutely, I will spend my hard earned dollars yet again, because this here is showing that there are some talented mother foes in the Ripperverse, and those guys are delivering on a brand new world for all of us to get into. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed my spoiler-free review. I have to give some things away here and there about themes and elements and stuff, because otherwise it's really hard to talk about. But make sure that you guys tune in tomorrow for my spoiler review, because that's where we're going to have some fun. I love spoilers myself, and if you like spoilers, you need to tune in. And if you guys have not read the book, the comment section is for you. If you guys have read the book, wait until tomorrow to comment, okay? Just, just wait. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. And I would ask, beg, borrow, and steal just to get you guys to click the links down in the description below to join my gilded server and my drinkwithcrazy.locals.com. Oh, and by the way, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm also over on Rumble as well, so click that link while you're down there. See you next time.